Welcome to the eighth episode of our project on PLC and HMI programming in which we're designing a street light control system. So in the last video, we've inputted two different cards which are going to be responsible for the inputs as well as the outputs for controlling our system that being said the plc definitely does fault out if you don't have the hardware installed because it fails to communicate so i did have to change this to just local plc tags that being said we're still going to be using these light outputs and light confirmations which are coming back from our system just like you would in a real system so remember that on your output side you would send a signal for example to turn on a green light or for example in a manufacturing system that would be turned on a certain conveyor and then on the input side you definitely want to have some kind of a confirmation this could be based on the motor itself so the motor could send you back an input which does say it's running or you could have for example a feedback on your contactor which means that the contactor has been pulled in regardless of the application this is a very common practice so we're going to jump into this we're going to implement an alarm system in this episode as well and i'm going to be discussing in great detail why some of these practices are extremely important in control systems before we get started with today's video we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the solus plc youtube channel and this includes industrial automation plc programming as well as hmi development and if you enjoy this type of content we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel so if we look back in our main routine we have a very simple setup which essentially turns on lights on and off we do have an output which goes out but we do need to receive feedback if we don't receive feedback in a light traffic system which is actually a protocol implemented on live street light traffic lights but you don't see it it's in the background there's going to be a diode which is going to pick up pick up the light and confirm that it has actually been turned on if it hasn't then it's going to fault out the system and you'll see the generic you may have seen this on the roads where the lights start flashing red and they just stay that way and everybody needs to make a stop at that intersection so essentially we're going to create a new routine and this is going to be 06 and this is going to be called faults and this is going to be a ladder diagram once again and here is where we're going to start creating the different faults that we're going to be using in the system so very simply put faults are going to be essentially latched in as soon as they occur and then they're going to change the state of our current system so it's going to be a simple um, simple scheme that being said let's go back into the light system so the way we want to handle this is whenever we send out an output to the green light to turn on so we're going to take this essentially ote copy this into the faults i'm going to paste it here and change that to an xic so whenever we want to turn it on we need to receive the confirmation if the confirmation is not there we are definitely faulted out so the confirmation is going to come in on an input and this is going to be here so light one green light confirmed on let's see here so if it's not confirmed which is going to be an xio remember xio means that it's not confirmed so when we want to energize the light and it's not confirmed we are in a faulted state so i'm going to create a new um, new array so this is going to be a light system flt so false flt and this is going to be the first one in the array and of course as the fault comes on we definitely want to latch this in so this is going to be another xic and we do want to have a reset so this is going to be system reset system fault reset system fault reset so if the if the latch is on and then the system fault reset a tag which we're going to create here boolean plc box create and if this tag is not pressed then it's going to stay on until we hit the system fault reset button and then it's going to allow the system to be operating once again so of course we do need to create the array of faults boolean and then let's make 64 of them for now let's hit create and this is going to be the first fault so i'm going to also put in a description and call it fault zero and this is going to be light light one green light 
um, faulted. Green light faulted. So light one, green light faulted. Very descriptive. I'm going to copy paste this in and I'm going to change the tags. So this is going to be one for the yellow light. This is going to be one for the yellow light as well. We're going to use the next boolean within that array to indicate the fault and of course we're going to change this the reset is going to remain the same we're going to also copy this description over to this tag light one yellow light faulted and this is going to be fault number one three four five six so we're going to have six different feedbacks we definitely have two distinct lights and within each one of those lights we have yellow green yellow and red so let's see here one two three this is going to be a two two and as tedious as this may seem this is the actual procedure to creating faults there's of course ways to speed up the process by using techniques like structured text or you can use even a UDT or an AOI instruction but those are a little bit more complex we're not going to get into those in this lecture but we might get back to the system and optimize some of those features so let's see here we're just going to go manually create this setup let's say for five okay so i'm going to not put in the comments but just to give you an idea so this is going to be green yellow red then green yellow red for the other light so let's compile this and give it a test and we go back to main and we do need to copy paste one of these jump to subroutines as always so underscore zero six faults and compile this once again hit yes so one thing you'll notice is that the faults are going to start start to latch in and that's very easily explainable so the reason for that is our outputs the confirmations are not actually wired into anything so the system is continuously faulting out and that's just uh, the nature i guess of testing on a live plc without having sensors in the field as you can imagine the inputs are all off so in this case, we have never a confirmation of the lights being turned on. So the system is definitely faulting out. That being said, when the system is faulted, we want it to do something different than what it's currently doing. So if I go back to my HMI and I simulate the system, remember that the system is still going on. It thinks that it's faulted, but it's still operating just as it normally would. So we do need to create a different state for the system and program that in so let's go back to the plc and first of all i'm going to create a rung there is a better way to do this but i'm going to place this rung and i'm going to say that if any of these are true so xic once again very useful instruction let's do here so zero one two three four five six so this is the most simplistic way of doing this but if any of the faults are true the system is faulted let's see here four five so we only need those i'm going to delete this and let's see here so light system faulted so the system is definitely faulted i'm going to create this boolean tag on the plc side i'm going to compile this and this is just to simplify the process so you don't need to use this all over the place so the system is definitely faulted i'm going to go back into the light system and what i'm going to create is i'm going to use this as an xic to turn on any of my lights so the system is faulted of course this needs to be an xio i apologize for that if the system is not faulted then you can proceed with turning on the lights in a sequence let's see here here So we're going to essentially cut off any power from all of those OTEs. Let's see here. That should be good. So when the system is faulted, nothing is flashing. And if we, let's go back into the faults. If we clear the faults. So of course, by resetting here, 
we can clear the faults but you'll notice that this is going to create a problem where the system is trying to reset but we because we don't have the confirmation it keeps faulting out and essentially trying to reset immediately so what we need to do is the inputs we can just toggle these bits for now since they're not necessarily coming back from any hardware we can just toggle them go back into the faults reset the fault and go back into our system so you'll notice that the system is back and running in this case since we've essentially bypassed any of the faults that being said the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to tell the system to flash the red lights once it is faulted so let's go back and untoggle those inputs let's just untoggle one of them to allow the system to fault out essentially and so here if the system is faulted like i said it needs to toggle the red light so let's create some logic so here the system is faulted and we can essentially turn on the red and then the red stays on so we can create a system which is going to be modifying this rung and let's see here so how do we want to do this so we definitely want to create a rung around so if the system is faulted so if the system is faulted then we don't need to check this we do need to directly go to the red and this is also not faulted so we're only going to worry about this um, about this rung if it's not faulted and if it's faulted it turns on red on both of those lights and we do want a blinking red so let's see here so so this is going to turn on red and we do need to add another rung so if the system is faulted then there's going to be a timer so red is going to be on a timer let's see here so t on so this is going to be faulted timer so faulted let's see if we use faulted timer and there's many ways to do this but essentially faulted t let's see here right click a new timer create and preset is going to be two seconds it's going to start at zero and it's going to essentially reset itself actually let's just do an xio on not done so this is going to be a timer which is going to keep cycling we do need to reapply this on the second system as well so let's go back down to the red light and we could have actually done this on the output so i do change my i do want to change my mind um in the way we set this up so we're going to remove this logic a little bit we're going to move this rung below the red system actually we're going to move this i think that's okay we're going to edit this and then it's going to be turned on by this and if it's faulted if the system is faulted then it's going to use the timer so let's do a les les instruction so when the timer faulted dot t that accumulated it's going to be less than 1000 it's going to turn on this and then on the other side we also need to reapply the same logic this could be optimized slightly i don't like the way um this rung is set up that much but it should do the trick grt so when this is greater than a thousand then it's going to turn on the red light let's compile this and see what kind of a result we get so we're definitely in the faulted state so we should be blinking this so let's look at the timer okay so this definitely needs to be 2000 preset so the timer is going to cycle two seconds and 
at one point it's going to turn on one of the lights and then at the other is going to turn on the other light so here remember on the hmi side we do need to correct this as well actually i think that's why i was doing it through the other code but here the visibility is going to be on the not the final tag but it's going to be rather on the so we're going to edit the group and we're going to modify the animation instead of being tied to the hmi in bool actually we do need to modify the plc i apologize about that once again i have forgotten that we've set up the booleans so here instead of modifying the hmi this is actually where this code shines remember that we've set up the tags from the hmi to be read from those status bits but really they need to be read from the output side because ultimately you want to make sure that whenever the output is turned on is when you report that to the hmi so let's go back to the output side and these are going to be the output so essentially the local output zero one two three four and five so let's go to the HMI interface and make that modification. So local D out zero, one, two. And then for the other one, it's going to be three, three, four, and five. So whenever they're asked to be turned on is when these are going to be energized as status bits. And of course, if we get an error, let's see what we get in the system so let's play this once again hmm. so for whatever, whatever reason i think i messed up the tag let's go see here so we have one that's blinking and then the other one that's not let's go back and troubleshoot this just a little bit so we have when the accumulated is okay i see the problem so when this is greater than 1000 actually no i think this this branch is the problem okay, let's cancel this i've added too many branches into my logic let's double check how this is working and let's make sure that they're out of sequence so as you can see the faulted state definitely brings the lights into the sequence that we would expect this is a normal traffic light condition whenever a fault is detected whenever you're not able to detect a certain feedback and let's go back to the plc into our faults and we definitely need to get the input which we've toggled here so we're going to toggle this back that being said as you can see it's still in a faulted state until we press the reset button so let's go back into faults and we're going to toggle the reset button to clear the faults and then we're going to go back into the hmi and the process should start over again let's go back in the plc and see what's happening in the system so as you can see we're definitely outputting the green and then we should be outputting the yellow and then outputting the red so there you have it the red yellow and green is definitely back just to do one more test if we don't receive a certain input so for example this three and we don't get this one then the system is going to go back into the faulted state and that's pretty much how you do error handling and how you define different states of course we're going to make this logic a bit more efficient but that's going to be a topic for the next session thank you guys so much for watching my content if you have any questions on this topic make sure to leave them in the comment section below and if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video if you've enjoyed it that would mean absolutely the world to me and if you have any suggestions for the channel what kind of hardware software i should be covering then make sure to leave that down there as well see you next time take care bye